All right, in today's video, we're gonna look at the right arm. Should it be in close or should it be away from you in the backswing or downswing? Sean, dagger 66. I'm guessing that's some sort of a uh, bad dragons. dude not to mess with. <laughs> dagger 66 wants to know, is it better to keep the right arm in close to the body or let it come out? And I think he's talking about in reference to the right arm pros versus AMs video. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. I gave a lesson to somebody the other day that was asking about this very same thing. She had the idea that she should tuck the right elbow. On okay. the backswing? On the backswing. Okay. So she had um, the right concept. So there's a couple angles here. I usually talk about in a golf lesson. One of them is the angle between the forearm and the upper arm. And then the angle that's created between the torso and the upper arm. So you okay. got two kind of right arm angles right. Uh, if you look at it that way, right? Mm -hmm. So she understood the fact she didn't want to overbend the right arm elbow angle, basically, mm -hmm. right, in gears. But she, she was told by one of her playing buddies to keep the right arm tucked because it would help her not come over the top. Okay. Now, let's just say this was one of the most severe over-the-top golf swings I've ever okay. seen. So that advice, again, from a playing partner wasn't helping. No. So here's what it looked like. Okay. I'll stand to the side here. So normal setup. Keep the right elbow tucked. Keep the right elbow tucked. Keep the right elbow tucked. Keep the right elbow down. Down. She had Very the right low club head. Yeah, super low club head. So she didn't make this move because she felt like she didn't have a long enough back swing. So she went up and then way over. So, so did it, did it. Then instinct took over and she tried to generate some speed. She had to get to the ball somehow to hit okay. it, you know, more than 50 yards. So she went up way out over the swing plane to do that. Okay. So you can go down a tour range or probably your local driving range and see a lot of golfers either with towels or gloves under this right arm. Yeah. Again, you have to be careful about what you're trying to accomplish with that. This is not, you know, such the greatest move. So if this is you, maybe that's helping. But if you get really good at keeping this right arm tucked in, yeah. you're gonna have to do some awkward things unless you just have really weird body dimensions Absolutely. to get to the top very solidly. So I think a better way to, to think about it is if I took a ball in my hand and I took it up to the top of my, like a, if I was making a throwing motion, mm -hmm. I was going to throw the ball into the ground. Right, I was thinking right. about what would I do if I was going to play another sport, grab a ball. If I was going to throw it into the ground, I would get my arm in a spot where the elbow was away from the body a little bit, Creeks just like I motion. did when I pitched baseball as years growing up. I would get my arm here cocked to get the arms up at a height where I could not only create some speed, but I've got the arms in a good spot to plane the club on the downswing because if you're severely low with a with a pin right elbow, mm -hmm. you are either going to make a severely into outswing or maybe get lucky and kind of get it on. Or plane. slow swing. Or a slow swing. That Mike makes a great point. If you want to really not hit it very far, keep the start elbow restricting pinned. range of motion. Yeah, so just get the arm in a comfortable spot. You don't need to have a flying right elbow. I, I, no, probably wouldn't want you to do that. Just point it toward the ground. Get a little bit of space under here. Right? Yes. If you're watching yourself on video, you'd have the kind of the left arm if you're a right-handed golfer, just kind of covering the right shoulder from the down the line. That gives you enough arm height to be in a good spot to swing down the swing plane without yeah. having to make any big exaggerations. Uh, you know, use other athletic motions as your guide here. Yeah. You know, like what Sean said, I love that. Put a ball down or a tee where a ball would normally go. Take a golf ball and try to really slam the ball oh, into the top of that tee. You're not going to do this and really do much slamming. You probably won't dent the ground very much. You're going to raise it up, come down very hard. Or if you want to chuck your club or an old club down the driving range, same deal. You're going to do it, get some range of motion, some freedom there. There's a difference in learning how to move that right arm correctly yeah. and then just saying, I don't want that right arm to move because I'm afraid of it moving poorly. Yeah, and anytime you start taking things away just to pin them down or, or um, restrict motion, right. You may want to rethink that and try to figure out, instead of restricting it, let's figure out how to put it in a better place. That's exactly right. We want to add speed to the system, not remove speed for the sake of being fearful of a Flying, swing right, flaw yeah. or whatever. Absolutely right. So put the blinders on, the earmuffs on when you're playing with your buddies. Yeah. And just learn how to do it the right way. And we'll do everything we can to help you with that. But restricted motion isn't a good substitute for poor motion. Absolutely. 
All right, thanks for watching. Let us know if you're having issues with your right arm, elbow, whatever it is on this right appendage over here that's giving your golf swing trouble. We'd love to help you out. Please click on the big golf ball if you haven't already done so. You get the next video just as soon as it comes out.